Hello there, and welcome to Wastelands Raceway. Um, I am Kinky Weasel, and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing these rust textures that I've bought from Green Stuff World. Um, this isn't a sponsored video, um, I bought these myself, and so I'm just going to have a play with them and see what they can do. I bought three colours I've got the, the dark oxide rust, red oxide rust, which is like a, a middle tone and their light oxide rust which strangely enough is a light tone so there you go there's the two colors the three colors there let's get started um, i'm trying to shake it but there's, there's no movement in there at all um okay i see it's um it's very much like a paste uh let's have a look it's um yeah, it's got a bit of a grain in it. Very, very fine grit in there of some description. Okay, it's a bit like um, the Games Workshop um, paint. What's it called? Typhus Corrosion, that's it. So let's just see what these colours do. First one, the dark one, is uh, it's quite dark. It's got a bit, looks like it's got a slightly purpley tint to it. But that might just be because it's not dry yet. So the paint's very thick, it's not like a standard acrylic, it is very much like a paste or a gel. Um, it's just... Yeah. You try painting it on like a paint, it, it... It goes on very thin, colour-wise. Um, I can see the grain, the texture in it. So it's... Uh, Let's see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm just putting a thin coat on here just to see what that's like. Yeah, you get the other base coat showing through quite quite a lot. Let's try a thicker application on this side. Just so now I'm, just, I'm dabbing it on rather than painting it on. Goes on very thick if you do it like this. You get quite a bit of um, a bit of build up. Let's just dab it on and see how that goes. I'm gonna do a bit more on this side, painting it up. Just try a second. Coat. Okay, so that's the darker coat dry. I'm just going to try have a play with the mid coat now. You can see this is a very similar kind of texture. Yeah, it's quite grainy. So let's let's have a go. Let's start putting it on really thick on this side first of all. What I'm going to do is do it on the inside of, of where the dark stuff is primarily. But try and let some of the dark show around the edges. Yeah, it's um because of the thickness of the paint, it's not so easy to work with sort of fine. fine lines well, that's it's not looking bad you know let's try brushing it on yeah it's quite odd to work with it's it's I mean, it does what it's supposed to do I guess it's got a texture and it's a rusty color but it, it feels very different to use from the kind of acrylics we're probably all used to. I think the easiest way to work with it is to get a blob on and then spread it around a bit, um, possibly. If anything, I think this mid-tone one is um, is thicker. 
brushing it on, it, it covers slightly, well, maybe not. I would suggest you probably don't want to be using your finest brushes with this because the abrasiveness of the medium itself I think will probably end up taking its toll on your brushes. And what you can do with, with it thinned down is adjust the colour itself without the grit in. Kind of does give a nice staining effect. Let's leave that to dry. Let's see how it looks when we come back to it. So, so far, so good, I guess. Uh, moving on now to the light pigment. This is very, very light. I don't know if it will darken as it dries, but um, yeah, obviously this is fresh rust. This seems to, this feels a little smoother, a little, a little easier to control. Um, yeah, it's a good contrast to the other two. It's, it's very bright. Okay. I think using all three colours on top of each other, although that's probably going to get you the best effect overall, you're going to need to be careful because this stuff goes on really, really thick and so it's going to obscure any detail you've got. Um, so you're going to need to be careful how you use this stuff, I think. But, do you know what, I'm kind of liking this. Using a mixture of thinned down, which sort of thins itself, spreads itself out a bit. And then slightly thicker and amongst it. It's get quite a nice effect. Let me see what I'm doing there. I'm putting the first bit on quite thinned just to get a suggestion of the colour on there and then just dotting in after as well it's still wet dotting in with slightly thicker colour as it dries the paint becomes slightly less vivid which is good I'm tempted to say the effects are subtle, but not that subtle. I mean, rust isn't subtle, is it? Um, but yeah, it's it's going on nicely. Just as I said, it's very different to work with than a, just a straight standard acrylic. And if it performed the same as a straight standard acrylic, you'd be using a straight standard acrylic, wouldn't you? So. Now this is interesting, going on really watered down. Right, so that is all three colours used together there. I'll um, give them the chance to dry and then we'll come back and have another look. So, there it is dry, it's, it's, dry. it's looking pretty good I think isn't it, I mean um, I think on camera the colours are coming out slightly brighter, a bit more contrasty than than they actually appear on the, in reality, but yeah as you can see that's not a bad effect. Um, what I'm trying to do is just do a, a, a thinned down wash over the top of these, or half of it, and, and see See how that comes out. See if that makes a uh, makes a difference. It does 
um, pick up the texture in the in the paint itself. Um, so yeah, that's quite effective. Okay, so now that the wash has had a chance to dry, um, observation, it does dull down the contrast on it. It, it knocks a contrast right down. Um, now it does give it quite a nice subtle look. If you're gonna use washes over them, you probably wanna make more use of the light one. Um, because that is gonna probably show through the wash. But there you go, you can see the difference between washed and not washed. Um, they've both got plenty going for them. Um, I've had another bit more of a play with it elsewhere on this container, so got some here that I've not washed, so you can see that it's quite contrasty there. I probably prefer it that way, to be honest with you. I've also sponged some on the side. Um, now there's not a lot of the grit has come off with the sponging. Um, so for sort of chipping, general rust pitting, it looks okay. Um, but if you're just going to do that with sponge, you probably don't need the texture paint. You could use a standard acrylic for that. Um, but there you go. Um, also, what I have done is tried it out on um, on a cheap old car, one of the cheap old pound shop, cheap shop Chinese import cars. Um, I think got a brand on it. Um, so I just applied it direct to the paint, sponged it in places and used a brush elsewhere. Um, and I have put a wash over it. So you can see, yeah, it, it's, it's looking proper rusty. Um, very thick, crusty type, scabby rust. Um, but do you know what? It works, doesn't it? It works. Um, yeah, I think just with things on like Hot Wheels scale, you're going to need to be careful with it because, like I said, it is very thick. But other than that, yeah, on the whole, a thumbs up for this stuff. So, there you have it. Uh, Rust textures from Green Stuff World. Um, they're in 30ml bottles. The price was just short of £4 a bottle, um, which is compares favourably to, shall we say, other well-known game hobby suppliers who may or may not have high suit shops. Um, so yeah, it's a significantly larger bottle than, for instance, Typhus Corrosion um, and a similar kind of price. So value-wise, yeah, can't argue with that. Effects, pretty good. I like, um, need to be careful. As I said before, if you're using them on highly detailed pieces, especially sort of small scale, hot wheel scale stuff, um, because it will obscure detail. So use it mindfully. Um, but that's it. Um, that's the end of this uh, this review. Uh, do give us a thumbs up if you like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We're only a few subscribers short of 500, which is quite exciting. Um, but anyway, so thanks for watching. It's me, Kinky Weasel, signing off. Um, bye for now.